Hey folks, we are announcing a new feature that is going to help you write cleaner and faster code. This feature is dubbed the mutable JavaScript variable feature. And what it means is that it's going to enable you to create global variables anywhere from within JavaScript programmatically on the fly. And this is a huge game changer. So if you're a bit familiar with AppSmith, uh, this is going to reduce the number of times you depend on the AppSmith store or the local storage API because you can create variables anytime you want to from within JavaScript and access them from any function or any widget on the platform. So what we're going to do in today's video is we'll take a closer look at this feature and we'll talk about what this feature is really. Then we'll discuss how this feature differs from using the AppSmith store or the local storage API. And we'll wrap up by taking a look at a use case that demonstrates the power of being able to create your own mutable JavaScript variables. All right, so let's get into it. My name is Confident, and I am a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so taking a look at my screen here, since the inception of the JavaScript editor feature, you could always create variables, right? And each time you create a new JavaScript file, a template exists that could help you uh, form a starting point. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. So let's create a new JavaScript file. And this is the template you've seen a million times by now. You could create variables, which is shown in the first examples here. So for instance, I'm going to create a variable called name and set its value to Sam, all right? And of course, since this is a variable, I can read this value and reuse it somewhere else. So let's go into the first function here. I can say return this.name. And if we go on to execute this, you should see the value Sam showing up on the console right here. So this has always existed on the platform. But a little problem with this feature is that although you're able to create variables and reuse them or read them elsewhere, you could not actually update the values of these variables. There was just no way to update them. And this is the exact problem that the mutable JavaScript variable feature fixes because it allows you to do all of this. And it's a bit different from the store value function because don't forget to build modern apps. Um, while you could not create variables in the past, people decided to use the AppSuite store, the local storage API to create containers of variables that they can mutate at any point in the application. So say for instance, we want to re-implement this logic using the store value or the app Smith store API, all we had to do is just use the store value. Okay, I'm just going to show you what I mean. All right, so um, I'm going to clean up this file because we have a lot of boilerplate code. And here, if I needed a container that I could update at any point in the future, I'm just going to save that value in the store. So the key is called name, the value is Sam. And of course, I can return its value. So we can say return appsmith.store.name. And then um, I'm just going to run this so that we see it works. We actually still have Sam coming back. And then if I need this value to be updated, all I need to do is rewrite on top of the previous value on that same key. So this is what that looks like in practice. So this is going to be store value name. So let's update the name to uh, Ben, for instance, all right? And here, I'm just going to return that same value. So return appsmith.store.name. And you see that we have uh, Ben showing up. I'm just going to rerun that. We have Ben showing up. So that value has been updated, but this actually requires a huge learning curve, right? Because this is not natural. If you need a variable in JavaScript, you are able to create it and update the value whenever you need to. But on AppSmith, you have to rely on the local storage API or using the AppSmith store through the store value function. But the JavaScript variable feature actually changes this experience. So let me show you how you go about implementing this same logic using the new feature we're talking about. So let's create a new JavaScript file. And I'll create a variable called name and set it to Sam. All right. And then we can actually read Sam, for instance. So I can say return app uh, this dot name. 
and this should give us some as you can see we're getting some back then if we do need to change the value of that variable it's actually also possible which is actually powerful so let's go on to do that so we can say this dot name is equals to ben and we can return this dot name all right and as you can see we're getting ben back after executing this function all right so this is a really powerful feature and it's going to unlock a lot of potentials because you can create variables on the fly and you can also update previously created variables which has a lot of applications when building on appsmith so let's switch gears and let's talk about how this differs between using the appsmith store or the local storage api so for many of you who are quite familiar with AppSmith, you may be wondering, uh, why should I use this when I could actually do the exact same thing using the AppSmith store or the local storage API? So let's talk a little bit about a few differences to help you decide when to use what feature or which of these features. The first is that using the mutable JavaScript variable feature is going to enable you write much cleaner code. So let's take a look at the example we've been working on. Compare this code, which is seen on the screen, to the previous piece of code, which is shown right here. You can see that this is way more verbose, like I actually have to write a lot more. And it's not easily understandable, except you're someone who is a bit familiar with AppSmith. But the new feature actually retains that natural JavaScript expression, because if you're used to how JavaScript works and you know how objects works in JavaScript, then this is going to come naturally to you. You don't have to wrap your head around what is going on right here. So it's much cleaner compared to the previous method. Now, something you also note is that since these variables are created in memory, which means that if you create a new variable, you're storing data in memory, and each time you try to read a value from that variable, you're reading data from the memory, your applications are going to be much, much faster. And because your apps are going to be faster, your users will have a better experience and your users will definitely love you for that. So it's one good reason for you to give this feature a try. And speaking about memory, it's also a great place to store sensitive information. And that's because the local storage API, although it's a bit secure, but it's more susceptible to malicious attacks. So if you have sensitive data to, on your app that needs to be stored, uh, putting it in the memory is actually going to be a great deal. But switching gears, the mutable JavaScript variable feature is not a silver bullet. And that is why the AppSmith store still exists and will continue to be on the platform so that you can use it whenever you do need to. And that's because each variable created in a JavaScript file is only scoped to the page it exists in. So for instance, we've created a bunch of files with variables. All of these variables created inside of JavaScript is only going to be scoped to the current page. So if you do need to share data across your applications, across multiple pages, you might want to save that data in the AppSmith store, which uses the local storage API under the hood, and then all pages across your apps will have access to that data. Also, something to have in mind is that variables created using the new JavaScript uh, mutable JS feature is limited to the lifetime of your application. So that means if your users go ahead to close the browser window and restart the application, all of that data is lost. It's all automatically deleted. But if you need data to be persisted across browser sessions, you might actually want to use the um, AppSmith store or the local storage API. So I hope this has been helpful to you so that you can decide when to use what feature against the other, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So that's the little difference between these two approaches. All right, so let's wrap things up by talking about use cases. When should you use the new mutable JavaScript variable feature? Well, a lot of use cases for it. First, um, if you do need to manage application state locally, this is a great use case. Of course, it's giving you a container where you can save data, update that data, read it. So managing your application state is going to be one great use case for it. If you also need to store sensitive information securely, you could also put that in a JavaScript variable and you're guaranteed that only your AppSmith app has access to that data. And the moment the app 
is inactive or destroyed, that data is also destroyed. So it's not going to leave it out there for someone else to come read that data. And you could also use this feature if you want to cache expensive computations and reread the value multiple times in your application. Instead of reperforming those computations, you could perform that computation once, take the value, keep it somewhere in the memory by using the Java, a JavaScript variable, and then read it across your applications wherever you need to, and even update that data if you do need to. So there are a lot of use cases for this feature, but to keep this video short, we'll focus on one. We'll talk about the first one, managing application state. And I'm going to show you one use case for this, which is a pattern called optimistic updates. So it's this feature where you have changes reflected on the app locally before calls are made to your API or your database to have those records updated. And I'll show you everything, how it works and how to set it up on AppSmith using the mutable JavaScript variable feature. So taking a look at my screen, we have a simple application. It's a list of users and you can see each user has an image, a name and an email, and we can scroll through to view all of the users. What we want to do is we want to add a feature that allows people create new users. So you can click on this button, it opens up a modal, and you can enter the data for a new user. Now, to implement this using the optimistic updates feature we're talking about, I'm just going to walk you through what we have right now on the backend side of the app. So if we take a look at this, app it's reading data from the mock apps meet users and if we go look at the javascript file this is actually really easy we have a users container this is a variable we've created and when the init function runs we actually go on to execute the get users query to grab the users from the api and then what we're doing right here is we're storing that data into the container we declared earlier, which is the users array we have right here. And because we have our application architected in this manner, we can actually start doing some really interesting things. And I'm just going to show you. So if we need to implement a feature that allows us update the state of our application using the optimistic updates uh, design pattern, this is how it's going to work. So we have a form right here. And the form is called new users form. What we're going to do is Whenever this form is submitted, we're going to capture that data, have that user data added to the local state of our users, which is in the users array. And then after doing that, you notice that that change is automatically reflected in the application, even though we haven't made the update to the server. And of course, we'll go on to make the update to the server so that that record is stored. And if there's an issue with saving the user to the server, we can revert that change on the local UI so that the user knows that this wasn't actually added to the backend server. So let's do that. I am going to go back to the app.js file. And here we'll create a new function called uh, new user. All right. And what we're going to do is first grab the data from the form and have it added to the local user state. So we're going to say this.users.onshift so that we have it added to the top of the array. And this will be the new user form dot form data. All right, that looks good. Uh, then we can close up the modal. So this is going to be close modal and this is going to be modal one. All right, so now that we have that state updated locally, we can actually go on to make a post request to the API. Uh, but I can't do that in this video because we're actually using the mock apps in API and we don't have access to make post request to this API to actually update it. But if this was an API you actually own and control, this is where you make a post request to the API to actually have that data stored on the API. But we can simulate a use case where there's an error and then we need to revert the changes on the UI. So let's just do that. This is going to be a store value and I, it's not going to be store value, this is going to be set. So set timeout, we are going to have a function called and that function will ex be executed after six seconds so after six seconds we'll go ahead to execute the function and what this function is just going to do is throw an error so let's do uh, try try catch block um, in the try block we want to throw a new error so this is going to be throw new error and we'll say something like could 
not save user something really simple and we can go in to catch that error so we're going to handle that error by showing an alert and displaying the error message so let's do show a lot uh, error the message and this is going to have an alert type of error and of course since the update failed in our simulated use case, we want to revert that change we've made to the local state of the application. And we can do that by running this.users.shift, which is going to delete the first item um, on the list, which is the item we added up here on line 8. So um, if everything works, uh, we should see this implemented. And let's head back to the page to take this first spin. So I'm going to uh, go ahead to add a new user right here. So let's add a new user. The user's name is going to be John Doe. Avatar is going to be Jean. And email is going to be Jean at email.com. All right, so let's save this. We should see the user immediately added to the app, which is the whole idea behind automatic updates. Then after six seconds, we should see that user deleted from the app. All right, so let's give this a try. Oh, something I forgot was to hook up the submit button to the function we created. So let's do that. So whenever this button is clicked on, let's go on to execute the new user function. And then we should see this done. So I'm going to hit the submit button. And you can see we have the user John added. And after six seconds, that user is automatically deleted from the store, which is exactly what we wanted to accomplish. So this is how easy it is to set up uh, really nice features using the optimistic updates uh, paradigm that is available when you do take advantage of creating JavaScript containers. And of course, there's a lot more you can do with this. So let me know in the comment section what new features you'll be building using the mutable JavaScript variable feature. All right, so that's it for today's video. I'm going to catch you guys next time. But if you'd love to learn more about the other JavaScript features we are shipping, go check out this video on how to use widget setters. It's also a new JavaScript feature. And check out this video if you're new on how to use the JavaScript editor. All right, that'll be all from me today. Don't forget to get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.